yes, we got her. How do we do it, Brian? <laughs> I love this. We captured her. She was out in the wild. We got her over here, Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Why? Summer dinner series. Tomorrow night. Yes, tomorrow. They say, okay, there's no other time than the present. The deadline is here. It's tomorrow night. I think it's sold out, but you can check. SummerDinnerSeries.com. I do think it's sold out. If you're not going, you can watch tomorrow night. We'll be streaming live at 7 p.m. In the meantime, we've got prep work to do. Yes, we got it. Look, Look at, at this, this beautiful layout. That's awesome. Holy cow. As local as it gets right here. Local. With loca. I love That's, it. I love it. It's great. Okay, so those, are the, uh, those that know you know, but those that don't, wha where'd the nickname come from, loca? Oh, my God. It's a long story. Um, I think it was at Panzano, 1998. One guy, I don't know, he was yelling on the kitchen, and I was very quiet, not saying a bad word or anything. I was very shy. Yeah. And one day I get sick of his shit, and yeah. I start cussing like, you can stop me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me, he said, you're local. And I say, no, local, by the way, bitch. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Kaboom, there kaboom, go. throw the punch. I <laughs> Long time ago. So you earned it. Uh, yeah, I And guess. it stuck. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm telling you, we are going to have a great time tomorrow night. It's at Summer Dinner Series, downtown Pizza Republic. Pizza Republica, it's well-appointed, spacious very spacious everybody's got a lot of room we're gonna do it summer dinner series style everybody will be mic'd up just like that but today we're gonna jump over here yeah and cut up it. some fish let's do it all right she's gonna teach us Chef. how to uh, clean a trout we will follow her lead brian all right where do you want us chef this is your kitchen right now you tell us where to get everything you guys are gonna be my sous chef okay <laughs> what an honor. Well, the first thing, always the most important thing is to keep your fish clean okay. and dry. So it sticks on the cutting board and it's not moving around because that's how you can cut yourself. So that's the most important thing. Dry fish. Yep. You don't want the slippery fish. Nope. So first things first. Now, um, when you're approaching these fish, right, you got to just get in there. Yeah, you just go in it. I last week I did a big halibut. It's like a hundred pounds halibut, and it's kind of the same thing. You know the way that I see it. It's just different sizes, but you just kind of, you know, go from there and talking to the fish and give them some respect. Okay, and love. I it's love always, that. Thank you so much for to, this uh, life that everything. you're bringing us. Yeah. So I always try to keep one towel on top. So in case that the knife is slipped, you don't cut yourself. Gotcha. So you always end on the towel. So I always do the little cut right there. And then obviously, very, not super deep because you have all the guts inside. You don't want that to spread all over. Yeah, the fish can be very bad, stinky after that. So just go so a little bit. Do not cut the guts wide open. Nope. Cause it so you will just go very slow. And that can taint the meat too, can't it? Yeah. So that you're going to feel it. I always do my hands for everything. Lamb, goat, fish. You just kind of feel where you're going. How deep are you going? Ooh, you can see everything yeah. there. But if you go so deep, you can just break all of that and it's yep. not good. So just Use go your finger in. as a guide. Yep. These are very sharp knives. I think these are yeah. Elan's knives, aren't Look they? Look at this. Yeah, they're Elan's and I love him. This He's amazing. So at that point, you just, you know, cut everything. That's the first thing you do. You make it look so easy. I think it's the drying off the fish. That's where right, I... Right, that's, that's, that's the, the whole thing. You know what I really like about this process? She doesn't trust us to do this yet. Oh, no. <coughs> I always show you everything, obviously, as you no, go. No, no, you you're doing... I, listen, <laughs> this is preferable to me, the way that you're as doing As you go, and you always clean everything, right? Yes, ma'am. All right, Chef, you're getting in there. That's what yeah, you got to do. Yeah, just, that's what you got to do. Okay, you're going to see, you see a lot of blood there, so you wait until the, everything is done to, to take that part off. So as soon as you take this one, you just clean the inside so it's not all of this around. So this is local trout from Frontier Trout Ranch in Sawatch, Colorado, just down south. But at first blush, what, is it looking pretty good? this look good to it, you? It, I mean, obviously with this thing, you cannot smell a lot, but I can still smell, you know, it's yeah. so fresh. It's awesome. 
And we got this win, Brian, just a couple of days ago. Yes, we did, right on Friday. So after you do that, you're going just to basically fillet that. Again, you go just a little bit. I never go deep, so you don't break the meat like really bad. I always make the line first. Then the head is the first one going out. Just break it like that. Not all the way. You can see like mm -hmm. it's not all the way there. You flip it so you do the same thing and you have some, if you cut it all, you don't have a base to support that. So you always do the same thing. Cut the head off. When's the first time you've ever cut down a fish like this? I think it was with Jen Yasinski at Rioja when we opened. She started teaching me everything at Panzano in 1998, mm -hmm. but we started using bigger fish when we opened Rioja. And gotcha. Yeah. She, so she was she at Panzano and then Elise took over after Jen, or what? Yeah, Jen left, and I stayed at Panzano for another six months and worked with Elise, kind of to guide her about what Jen was doing before. And then we just keep going and going. So at this point, I always switch knives, depends where I am with the fish. This one is super thin, Kay. so you don't break the the fish. And you just go literally just like hold it always with one hand and slice the knife on top. That's all you're gonna be doing. And so you're not breaking. Like you're just barely touching the bones. Yeah, right? so you that's what you try to do. You always kinda keep it in this angle uh -huh. so you don't break the bones. That's the first side. And then you do the other one. What are you going to do with this fish for tomorrow night? Um, so I'm going to make ceviche. It's agua chile. It's a, a style of ceviche that we do in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually you don't use this kind of fish. You use like uh, halibut, you use shrimp mm -hmm. because you poach it and, and, and lime juice. This one is going to be a little bit different because this fish, you cannot soak it a lot on lime juice because it will be like in pieces and really rubbery. Yeah. So you're just going to merge that and lime juice for a little bit, and it's almost ready to serve it. Yeah, that acid will get right in there. And oh, See, this is the part. This is the hardest part, I'll tell you, of cleaning the fish. Yeah, the it's just, you just get on top of the, you see the little bones right there? So if your knife is sharp enough, you, all you have to do is just keep going, and eventually you're going to get to the end, right? So you find but an you edge and see, you keep yeah, you rocking. Just keep Basically, it's light in the knife around. See, right? I think I could be the guy up front. I could and be I the guy keep getting it. guts out all day right? long. You could? I but could that's that it. All, all right. Long, like a machine. <laughs> this part. I can uh, lug the fish over to you. <laughs> yeah. You <can laughs> and then we'll hand it off to Dana. So at this point, you just, again, you just slide in that. You go right on top of the little bones. And you can start cutting just as you, you go. You just make it so look so easy. So just right on top. All of that, you can always uh, scrape it so you don't have any waste. And you can make like really good things with Ooh. this stuff, right? So I always use my knife to clean whatever you don't get out of the first shot. No waste. Hello, hello. We're busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't. Man, that just. So you can just go in the other way. You can always flip the, the fish. But the most important thing is just to get the fillet clean, you know, and then you just go right on top. And you have your two fillets. And look, uh, it's right a big there. deal that those eyes are clear like that, not cloudy, right? Yeah, that's good of course. That's, that's fresh. That's, you cannot get any better than this. So again, all of these pieces, you know, I always just. You know, you scrape it. You can make like the best like tartare. You can smoke mm. this, and it's so good. You can make like a whip. Yep. And it's Greg, you could eat it right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. we proven Just last like week at Jesus' dinner. Yeah. This is sushi great fish right yeah, here. This is sushi great fish. This is awesome. It yeah. is. So. Don't have to worry about what's upstream. So that's that's the way that I always do it, and also with this, I say, and this you have a lot of flavor, so I just boil that. I rinse it first with ice water like two or three times uh -huh. and then i boil that so i make my stock and whatever so i can make a soup nice. or i can i mean and these things you use everything you utilize every you get, single you thing. get it all yeah no waste kitchen that's what you want this do. one you do a little bit of lime salt pepper and ready to go in your ready to rock yeah well i mean where's the ready lime? to rock look is this a spleen or is that what is that 
Is that that's part of the fish, right? Yeah, the, that's part of the guts, yeah. The guts, yeah. right? Yeah, it looks like spleens or something. Yeah. So with this one, after that, you know, the reason why I go, usually you get a little bones right here, right? You can see it right yeah, there. Yeah, you can. So if I go the way that I do it, you go on top, you don't finish all the way down, so you don't get any of those bones. Any of them. So it's ready to go. You just grab your knife. And I always use just like literally my hands to hold it. You just slide your knife all the way. In what instance would you leave the skin on? I like to leave skin on if I'm grilling some fish. Me too. You do? But if you're going to do ceviche, uh -huh. you have to clean Bring it all it the way so this and is ready to go. If you're going to pan sear on this side, you can always do just a little lines like on the fish. Uh -huh. Not too bad. You know, you don't want to get into the skin, it's uh, onto the meat. So it's basically, you see the little line? I do. Yes, so the skin, when it's getting crispy, doesn't curl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can just spin sear the whole oh, thing, and it's the best. Oh, yes. And so, and Dana, this is a, a trout, so it doesn't have the scales like a bass. Or yeah, a, you a, don't a, have to descale this kind, descale, because the yeah. skins, I mean, you can tell they are so good. You can eat those ones. They are so thin, and probably they are super crispy. So sometimes what I do to utilize everything you can scrape everything, like I say, you start tires, whatever. This one, you can dehydrate or fry and make like chicharrones with this. Yeah. And it's amazing. So you still use every single thing of the fish. So that's the beauty of when you do all the butcher in house, you utilize every single thing. Even if you have a little waste here and there, it's going to end in something else. So. So we got fish tomorrow night. We have lamb tomorrow night. We've got all the produce you could ever imagine. Imagine. And we look. Heirloom tomatoes, corn, and I'm season. All of that is. We're delicious. actually sending some corn home, some sweet corn, with, with folks yeah. that are coming, like three cops of it, yeah. which is cool. People looked at your menu yesterday. I have it ready to print, so it'll be, I'm going to put it out there today. You have to fix that for all the Spanglish. <laughs> My business partner is always like, Dana, please do not send this menu. Really? We got to fix it. I yeah. thought it looked great. I mean, we looked at it in Jay's first reaction was this is the way a menu should be written it's straightforward it's right it's not complicated it's basically it's not you just put ingredients and the most important thing one thing that we do in our restaurant 75 percent is gluten free or we finish everything to order for dairy free and other stuff so if you just see the ingredients you know what you're eating yeah keep it simple don't make weird names complicated mm -hmm. people don't understand what's going on because then they they're not ready to order right yeah. so. do you think that's part of your spanish heritage because i think spanish food or mexican food in, in, even in more so is so straightforward yeah you know what you're getting a lot of cross it's, utilization too. yeah well you use everything but it's like i was thinking if, like because i always tell these guys I, I, in my heart i'm a mexican inside and I, I was saying this morning when i was cooking i was saying you know what mexican in every mexican refrigerator you have onions you have cilantro yep. you have limes you have avocados tomatoes it's like a basic not chilies well you <laughs> have the, you have that in season so, or you have it in the freezer here's the you, thing. Made it last you year. always have those ingredients peppers onion garlic and then you have tortillas and cheese mm. yeah and let me tell you why. Cheese? So, yes. I'm glad that cheese. So le so, le le sure. queso. Let me tell you why. So my mom used to tell me all the time, if you have people here, when you go and visit people, you kind of need to make a phone call and make an appointment. And hey, you know, it's like a special something. In Mexico, it's different. Mi casa es su casa. You always hear that. Everyone can come at any time. If you have those ingredients, you make a really quick fucking salsa <laughs> and make... Chilaquiles, enchiladas, tacos, you can make anything. You got yep. the tortilla, you have the cheese, you can griddle the cheese and that tortilla uh -huh. and that sauce, Boom. people is happy. Yeah. Yep. You will always have something yeah. ready and that's why we always Yeah, so if I walked way. in the door, right, how long would it take to put something down for me to eat? Nothing. <laughs> and it's not like, oh, you don't have to announce yourself. Yeah. You know you always be welcome yeah. and you will always have something to eat yeah. or to drink. Or to drink. <laughs> Let, speaking of that, we're going to do a little reset here. Wash your hands up because we want to look at this delicious, deli you brought us a little sample. Awesome. Let's make it a secret. Okay, this is exciting. Chef Dana this Rodriguez is, is in studio sad. with us. Do you know who's behind the camera right now? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> it's Jay Johnson from Bear Creek Distillery. I'm not even kidding you right now. Uh, we're in Studio Kitchen, Colorado, getting ready for tomorrow night's summer dinner series. So we've got beer. We've got wine. We've got sparkling spirits. We've got sparkling. And we've got 
the, this is going to be, I think, I the first time in Denver that any more than a group of five people has tasted this. This is a, her very special pet project. I just heard today she has had some of this stuff aging already for five years. She's kept this thing a little bit of a secret, but like, think about it. Our whiskey friends got to be envious. She's coming to market with <laughs> stuff that she's been aging already. It's, it's, it's looking good. And uh, Mark, I was reading Mark Antonation did a great write up on it as well. And uh, I don't know when you're ready to release, but I think there's a lot of anxious people. Just start. What, it, what are we looking at here? What do you got? So what we have going on, you know, as you see, my nickname is Loca. Mm -hmm. So the brand to start is Doña Loca. Doña Loca is like Don Julio, Don Abram. It's like the people with respect. It's a, it's a boss. And I'm a boss bitch, <laughs> as you can see yeah. right there. <laughs> but it's like the female boss. Right? As Don it. and Dona. Exactly. So it's Don and Doña. So that's, that's the ones that we're going. So we have three different uh, species of agaves and the mezcal. Gotcha. So it is the Tobala. Esparin, which is the most traditional, and Tepestate. This is pretty herbal, and I love it. You would taste everything mm. after this. We have tequila, blanco, repo, and añejo. Yeah. This, is, this project is, is something very special to me. I started working in this long time ago with my partners because we always talk about sustainable food. Mm -hmm. It cannot be better than this, right? Mm -hmm. Sustainable buildings. We don't talk much about sustainable drinks. Mm. And, you know, it's a lot of shit show over there, like in every industry, mm -hmm. right? People is cheating. People is doing the wrong thing. You can be actually really sick if you're drinking the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. They put a lot of additives. They don't take care of the mother earth or the people actually doing the yeah, job. There's so. two things you look for is the ingredients and how they treat their employees. Exactly. I and, you know, that. that's, that's what we are very proud of what we do at Working Class with our businesses mm -hmm. and with our people. So I wanted to present something. That is organic, it's good for your body, and you appreciate all the people and the Mother Earth for what you can get out of that. So mm. I think it's very important to talk about sustainable drinks. Not just get super drunk and get shit face mm -hmm. and don't think about what you put it into your body. So yeah, you yeah. feel good about having a, having a l imbibing a little bit <laughs> and, right. and you will not have the bad hangovers with this it will I, be amazing now that's that's like you are speaking to me now all right we brought our taste tester with us bear creek and jay jay is with us tomorrow night at um summer dinner series bear creek's gonna be there chain reaction brewing company carboy wine this is all local local stuff that we're having here chef dana rodriguez is gonna be there let's break right now we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk to we're gonna head on over to the um sit down corner and talk to a couple of the farmers right we're and a rancher so we're going to talk to um mike harper from harper feeders that's okay. where we got the lamb from and then we're going to talk to brian cox where we got the peaches from and then you got to get so we're going to we've got her here with <laughs> us and then we're going to talk to jay johnson too today is a good day in studio kitchen colorado glad you could join us on a monday we'll break away right now if you're ready jay jay's ready okay we'll break off come right back the modern eater show continues hey guys chris johnson here owner of rome sausage your hyper local source for all things sausage awesomeness. My family is proud to carry on the fine traditions of Rome's founder, Jerry Rome, by producing a variety of amazing sausage in small batches with an eye on quality, not quantity. Every batch is made here in the great state of Colorado by hand mixing spices, utilizing lean cuts of pork to make an outstanding product. Sourcing ingredients and materials locally, we are committed to supporting local vendors, chefs, restaurants, and the entire Colorado food scene. Getting hungry yet? Brats, Italian, breakfast, hot Polish, green chili, chicken apple, and the world's best chorizo. You can source all of our sausage through a variety of food service distributors. If your distributor doesn't carry it, call us. We'll come direct. You want a custom item? We'll do that too. Samples, and of course, sausage jokes, can be had by contacting me directly at chris at romesausage.com or by phone at 303-296-7663. The modern eater loves Rome sausage, and I know you will too. <laughs> hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey restaurants, we're glad you're reopening. 
from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey guys, it's Modern Eater. This is Rich O'Brien with Elevation Food Service Reps. I'm here with one of our sales, a newly appointed hospitality specialist, Kalina Hillier. And we're here in our showroom, and uh, we've got our bar set up, we've got a lot of time. Come see us. Come see what we've got, and Kalina can help you guys out in the world of hospitality with anything. Um, take a little journey into the 38th Avenue kitchen just to see what's going on in here. And uh, as we come in here, I'm noticing, uh, Howard, what are you doing? Nothing. Sean, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Look at this beautiful equipment in here. Look at this beautiful, chefs, restaurateurs, anybody that has anything to do with food service, come on over. We'd love to help you with menu development, love to show you everything about equipment, and uh, maybe we'll even have a few pops. Hi guys, it's Rebecca Barry with Hot Schedules Powered by Four. With all of the recent COVID rules and regulations, you may feel like you have way too many cooks in the kitchen. Well, fortunately, Fourth is the leading hospitality provider and partner when it comes to onboarding HR, payroll, tax, and compliance needs. So that way you can keep all of those cooks in the kitchen and let us manage all of your administrative needs. That way you can focus back on your business and your growth plans. Give me a call for an analysis on how we can put that ROI back into your business and take those administrative burdens off your hands because nobody likes handling taxes. That's Rebecca.Berry at Fourth.com, Rebecca.Berry at Fourth.com. And hey, you know what's cool, guys? keeping your mask on so that way we can keep our doors open. Hey, Modern Eater fans, I'm Don Trobo with the Annex by Art at Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning it into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. Hey there, barbecue all-star. This is your year, so what if you weren't drafted? The only draft you need to be worried about is actually spelled D-R-A-U-G-H-T, and it's adult for the word beer. It's barbecue season, baby. Now get out there and grill your ass off. Yeah, there we go. It's their summer dairy dinner center series. I'm a farmer. What's up, everybody? This is Kaibab Savage, co-founder of Savage Spectrum Winery, home of Sparklet, Palisade's newest premier sparkling wine producer, coming to you live from our vineyard you can see this beautiful vineyard behind us we're so happy to pair up with the modern eaters for the summer dinner series check them out online summerdinnerseries.com to get your tickets you could come hang out with us you can try our latest releases of our sparklets it's the perfect aperitif to pair with these amazing creations the chefs are going to bring you can't wait to see you guys hang out with you guys tell you about our story get to know you better hope to see you there and that was that. Was, I just had to get hyped up. I just had to, get, you know, feeling good. <laughs> okay, welcome back. It's a great day in Studio Kitchen, Colorado. Just ramping up, Brian, to summer dinner series. And uh, tomorrow night's going to be, I can already tell, it's going to be a blast. We're ready to go. Doesn't it feel a little more normal in here, too? In here? Yeah. In Studio Kitchen? With actually chefs you, cooking in right. the kitchen. Yeah, We've got a distiller in sure. here. We've got friends back. It feels like. It's getting closer to uh, new normal. To new normal. I couldn't agree with you more. In the meantime and in between time, I want you to check out summerdinnerseries.com. That's where not only you'll be able to see if there's tickets left to Chef Dana Rodriguez's dinner, but for future dinners as well. Next Tuesday night, we'll look ahead to Chef Brother Lux going to come in. Yeah. And I spoke with Brother today. He's looking forward to getting up here from the springs and uh, doing what he does best, just talking to people and cooking food. So this is really cool right now. We have, uh, for tomorrow night, one of the purveyors. He's a local lamb rancher, 
And Mike Harper will join us on the program now when Jay says he's ready to rock and roll. Uh, other than that, Brian Cox is going to be here as well. He just entered the house, and uh, Nick Kayser, uh Chef Nick Kayser from Vesta Dipping Grill, will join us uh, in about, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes. And then also um, we're going to have Jay Johnson on, who Jay Johnson will welcome him right now to the stream. Good to see you, Jay. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, no doubt, man. Good to see your face. Thank you. What's been that's happening? That's the first person that's ever told you that. <laughs> no, I doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I highly doubt that. Things are good. You'll be with us tomorrow night. Yep. Looking forward to it. Uh, doing a little uh, one of our bourbon drinks. It's a Pike Peak Gold Rush. A mm -hmm. uh, little honey syrup, some lemon, some of our bourbon. Super tasty. And a mojito, too, right? We're going to do a strawberry mojito. Hell yeah. I know you're a rum drinker. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> How about tequila and mezcal? Let's. I'm excited to try this stuff right here. Yeah, did you think you'd be testing today, Jay? No. I, I, <laughs> I was told I was going to be flaying a fish, so I'm glad that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get him to do it. Hey, Mike Harper, can you hear us? I sure can. Ooh, yeah, bring. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> too, too. I try to be loud. I got you. I got you. This is a little learning process for me here. Are you there, Mike Harper? I sure am. Okay, buddy. You sound great. Uh, we can't see your face right now, but we know you're there. First of all, She's Chef Dana coming. Rodriguez um, here with us right now. And it's a great opportunity, especially for ranchers. I mean, you really don't get to see where the end product goes and who gets to mess around with it. I know Chef Jesus Silva had a great time. You were actually with us at the dinner last week, but uh, I'll just do the introduction right now. Dana, here's Mike. Mike, here's Dana. Hi, Mike. It was nice to Hi, Dana. you. Did the, did Jay get the chops to you yes, for tomorrow? I got it. They look okay. They look great. I can. Awesome. Wait. Awesome. So when you're uh, sourcing proteins, right? What do, what do you look for when you're out there, out and about, looking for stuff? Well, I was talking to him last week, and it was pretty interesting because he say where he sent his product. I'm like, that's where I get my lamb. Uh, obviously, different cuts, and I'm a butcher, so I can try to utilize every single thing on. The lamb and the goat and everything that we have at the restaurant, right? Uh, so when I was talking to him, it was very interesting because I say it's hard when you go straight to the farmers or the ranchers to try to get big quant qualities mm -hmm. and quantities. Yes. Like quality, sometimes it change based on how much you have. Also, you don't want to hurt those people when I say, hey, I, I can only use the the T-bones, or I can only use one yeah. thing. What are they going to do with the, the rest? rest yeah. So you have to kind of figure it out. You know, I used to get a lot of stuff from um, from um, El Regalo uh -huh. uh, for the goats. And I'm like, he say, I can give you all the legs. And I say, well, but if you give me everything, I can make beer. I can do everything. And with other people, it's like, well, can you get skirt steak? Can you take ground beef? Can you get... So you try to get as much as you can to help those guys because... You know, they are not going to kill all those animals yeah. just for one organ that some restaurants are requesting. So it's important to always talk to them and try to work together so you can benefit from, you know, you, both you, can be, be happy. Chef, you've identified something that um, obviously because you're in the business, so it's, so, it's so big. It's a big conundrum to ranchers. And that's one of the reasons why the model of just. Um, going straight to the processor and then having somebody take ev all the quantities off your hand and not being able to deal with it, it, it is good in a sense, but you're not diversified. Well, it just so happens that Mike Harper is going to start diversifying. And I'll, I'll let you say it, but coming up here soon, she's singing your song right now, right? Any chef that would want to take a full animal or be able to utilize it that way, that's what you're looking for, and this is really how far our ranchers are helped out with folks because that's right. You don't want to have all the ground beef in the world um, if, if you're a cattle rancher, and, and that's where a lot of the ranchers make that decision. It's like, okay, do I want to take it to a feedlot? Do I want to sell it in, at an auction? Do I want to hang on to it until the end here and fatten these up? How am I going to do this? But better yet, how am I going to get it to the end consumer? And that's a difficult thing to do when you should be out there ranching. Yep, the idea is to merchandise the whole animal, and if if people like Dana that are that are butchering, or I say cutting their own animals up, and she understands the value of every cut and the the uh, the beauty of every cut. Every cut of lamb is different and has different flavor profiles and different ways to cook it and prepare it, and I think that's the beauty of it. it it's a challenge for 
for a, a chef to, to come up with something that works for every cut. And, but that's what we need. And, and we as, as ranchers need to know that we've got a home for the whole animal and that we're not going to be sitting with half an animal in the freezer and, and uh, wondering what we're going to do with it. Yeah, so. quite, quite the commitment from the chef, though. Yeah. And, and really the good ones. Kyle Mendenhall did great. Dan Asher's wonderful with those types of things. And you look down the line of the list, and it's usually the folks that are just really into getting good quality products and no waste. Well, and Greg, something that I just tied into that Loka said that I think is super important. She was a butcher. So in, in many ways, yeah. I mean, it's almost like what Mike and, and some of the other meat producers could do is teach more chefs how to butcher because then they have a different appreciation for the animal, for the protein. Well, that's that a great question. Oh, so, Chef, was were, you being a butcher, was that because of necessity, because you needed to know more and you needed to approach the animal that way, or was it just something that you wanted to do? I think to me, you know, everything in life is, it has a reason, right? I started as a dishwasher. That helped me to understand the line cooks, the prep guys, and everybody. I grew up in a farm. So we grew up around animals. We have chickens. We have everything in the, on the farm. So you learn how to utilize everything. So when you're in a restaurant, that's the first thing you're going to think, right? Like, oh, I remember how I used to do the whole chicken or how we do the pork or what did we do with all, all this meat. So it's the perfect platform, the restaurant, to kind of help and partner with people to use everything. Last week when I was talking to Mike, I say, you give me what you have and I'll make it work. This is my challenge. I, I'll figure it out how I can make. If you give me scraps, I make sausages. If you give me T-bones, I'll grill it. If you give me whatever. So that's the beauty of learning how to utilize everything, including the bones. You make the best broth bone broth from all those animals. So I think it's very important um, to teach people or to, you know, these days, for the most part, we try to hire people that they already done. Then you miss all the, I have a great career. I say that because I have the best chef teaching me everything. I never went to culinary school. I don't have to pay. I don't have a loan. They pay me while they're teaching me. So that's the smart way to go and do some stash in restaurants time. and like, can I do sausages with you? Can I break up mm -hmm. lamb with you? And you will learn and eventually, you know, it's just practice. You know, I didn't know all of this until I, you know, I've been working for 20, 21 years, 22 years. So you learn every day. I order three goats every week and it's amazing to even have the tag with the name. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> You're going to taste delicious tomorrow. <laughs> or, you know, it, yeah. it's important yes. to... Um, go and put yourself up there to understand and respect the whole animal. Yeah, look at the smile on us. Do you see why we're in love with this woman? She's incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So nice. So you, we're going to zoom you in tomorrow night to get some of the guests that are going to dine with us. And uh, we think it's important to bring people, bring you in and, and talk and say hello. And, and this is where you're getting it from. So something a little more interesting tomorrow than that backdrop there, Mike. <laughs> Get out. Uh, no, I, I appreciate the opportunity, <laughs> you everybody. Bet. We love you. We saw you yesterday supporting local. He drove a friend down from Eaton, Colorado. They're up north. Awesome. And his name is Randy. Randy Miller. He's Randy a cattle Miller. feeder from years. Yeah, he brought him down. There is a sponsor on the show, Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions, where we get on federal here, 25th and federal. Mike brought him down, said, you know what? We're keeping our money local. We're going to get a couple of smokers. It's for a wedding gift. He brought him down, connected the dots, and there it is. That's how you support local. Yep. And we thank you so much for that. Thank you for the lamb. Thank you for the lamb. You're welcome. We're, I'm looking forward to good reviews tomorrow. I, I have no doubt that will be the case. <laughs> thank you, sir. We'll see you soon. You guys have a good afternoon. I appreciate the call. Thank you, right. Mike. I think it's spirits yeah. tasting time right now I while we get is. Brian Cox and talk peaches. And then I awesome. promised her a 250 exit. I'm 10 minutes away from it, but we're yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. You set it up. Talk about what we have here. And then if you don't mind, we'd like to just do a little tasting as we go along. Yeah, of course. Uh, so we have the three uh, mezcals that I have. Is the Espadin is the most traditional. Tepestat is per herbal. Uh, Tobala, I always tell people, watch out who you're drinking with because it's very, like, sexually thing that you're going to end Charging. with that person. So 
Be careful oh, who really? you drink it with. Oh, right. hell yeah. So I'm going to take the that? bottle and go away. Yeah, which one? <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not next to this guy. I know, right? Everybody get uh, their sip and go outside. Yeah, that's good stuff. So you can just try that. Um, uh, that's pretty. It's the easy drink. I'll pass it down a lot. Do and one I thing that is very again. important when we drink, uh, Nick. Nick is one of my babies over there. I love you. Hi, Nick. We work together. Uh, <laughs> I always call all the guys that we work together my kids. Because I'm the oldest one from all of these <laughs> young De- kids. Delicious. So while we're doing this, pe- so some people might be like, well, what's the difference between tequila and mezcal? Well, um, tequila is a mezcal. It's just, you know, at the end of the day, it's like champagne. You, it has to come from the different regions that you can call it. But uh-huh. it's it's a, it's an agave spirit, basically, both. Um, people always think like, oh, it's so smoky, it's not good. It's just... A lot of people don't know how to drink this. You know how you, when you have a glass of wine, you're always just moving around and, you know, make sure it's at the right temperature and all of that stuff. It's the same thing when you want to sip in a really good whiskey, bourbon, mm-hmm. that is aged and is super strong. It's the same thing with the mezcal and the tequila. So you almost kind of just put it on your drink mouth. Like a sir. Get me mine. You just put it in your mouth. You can just, uh, I always tell people, like, hold your breath. Let it go, and then you open your nose. So all the alcohol mm-hmm. is coming through your nose. And then when you open your mouth, you actually taste what are the things around those agave mm-hmm. plants, right? You taste the peppery, you take the spice, mm-hmm. you take flour, you taste honey. Like, it's a lot of things that you're going to taste on that. I so, almost pick up some peaches. Yeah. So people, you know, it's a lot of the oranges in, in Oaxaca. They're like this big, and the avocados too. I mean, everything there is like they have the perfect weather for a lot of stuff. So, it you're gonna pick up all of those notes, and it's it's important that people learn how to actually sip mm-hmm. and enjoy. And you know, after you learn all of this about it, then you can just have it on mixed drinks or whatever. But to me, it's more important that learn how to drink it and enjoy and try to find everything that is around. So you would approach it like a, a scotch or a whiskey. Yeah. And and what you want to do is you just get the mouth feel first, so get your mouth acclimated with exactly. that. Well, and in, engage your, your sinuses, sure. right? Engage yeah. your, your, your nose. And I think the problem with the agave spirit, you know, when you go to Mexico, you always think Cancun and let's go get drunk and shots. Mm-hmm. Everything is just like shooting tequila. You don't realize it's a great product up there and you just need to learn how to actually enjoy it. Delicious. Now wow. tell me. When I can see it being really smooth to where you c- this could get away from you. You could keep going oh, all, all day long. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we have a, a thing at the kitchen with the little tequila. We're going to switch our brand of tequila I to like Locas. That. But now, let me ask you, when you're in Mexico, because sometimes, or was it the old tradition that sometimes the mezcal wasn't as fancy, like you said, about the champagne versus, versus the other? Would, would you, do, is there a difference between mezcal and, and tequila? Well, you know, it, it's been there for ages, right? It is just basically marketing, if you will. You know, it gets to that point that, you know, the people, tequila is come from tequila town. And it's big names up there. Mezcal, it was more like the under, mm-hmm. uh, which it doesn't make sense because tequila is a mezcal. So if you see it in the other way, it's like, well, it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but some people, it's, it's more about like, how they market, like all of the people in Guadalajara and Tequila Town, you know, that's what they do. It's a blue agave, and they have massive lands of this amazing juice, right? So it's all about the marketing. People they start listing mezcal after, but it's been there forever, actually. In Mexico, that's like the drink that you celebrate everything with. You know, like if it's a funeral, if it's a wedding, if it's a birthday, it's always most with mezcal. And it's, it was the most affordable because it wasn't a, have a great marketing like George Clooney mm-hmm. making tequila mm-hmm. that you can pay whatever because mm-hmm. it's him, mm-hmm. right? That's what people used to, used to drink. And my bottles, I always mention Agua Bendita. So it's holy water. And we always say, let's just drink some holy water and make yourself feel better. Mm-hmm. So it's... Well, when so you mezcal, go over to Mexico, yeah. overall, right, and then tequila. So I'm thinking about scotch, right? Scotch and then you, the whiskey without an E, with a Y, and then the Americanized with the E. Still within the same family, but just regionally, it's got a, variations of Exactly. Change. So it's, it's in agave spirits, if you want to put it in. It's in the same, um, in the same line, right? Mm-hmm. You just... 
now, uh, before Mezcal, it's like the same thing. They try to have their own name at uh, Oaxaca, so only the one coming from there is supposed to call Mezcal. Well, not these days anymore. It's seven or eight different states producing a really good Mezcal, like Durango mm -hmm. and uh, San Luis Potosí, Michoacán. It's so many other places, and they can call it Mezcal because they don't have like the same thing that tequila did long time ago to just market that it has to come from tequila town to be called tequila. Isn't that the same with hatch chilies? That that's just really yeah, a but it's a total myth because that's about New Mexican hatch yeah. chilies which they were just a, it's a marketing. So as to, to what she's saying because when you go over there Greg if you're in Puerto Vallarta yeah. which is in Jalisco. Uh -huh. So that's the state yeah. where or you have to be in Jalisco sure. to grow it. But you walk down the street and you see, like the little old men, they're not drinking tequila. They're drinking, they're drinking this. But it comes in a bottle, Greg, like a water bottle yeah. over there. Yeah. They mezcal will come in like a little bottle that's truly like you think it's a water bottle. It is. And it's amazing because I at first I saw them How's drinking it. How's the quality? It. I mean, the first time I bring some of my samples, it was like a literally water bottles with Sharpie <laughs> on it, and I'm like, okay. I get to the custom, and they're uh -huh. like, uh, what is this? And I'm like. Um, that's not mine. It's the next personal line. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't get in trouble. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just the way, the simple way that you always drink. You know, you have it always in your house. It's to celebrate. It's, you have a guest in your it's house. It's the holy water. Have a little bit of the, <laughs> exactly, have it exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. I Jay, have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Get in here. So there is a type of mezcal that they hang a chicken in the still. Yes. It's, is it it's called maguey? pechuga. 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 So it's just when you going through the distillation process, you can, it's not like infused vodka that you add the flavor into it. When you're doing the distillation uh, process that you're familiar with that, you add like um, coffee beans from Oaxaca. It doesn't mean it's like infused, like add it in. You just put it into the process and you get the flavor. We do the same thing with uh, pechuga and we use the turkey breast. So for those people that they, and this is a big question that people always ask, well, that means it's not vegan, you know, but not people vegan. don't understand after the, you know, distillation process and everything, it doesn't matter anymore, yep. yeah. it's, but it's, people is still. It's a plant, trust it's, me. It's gluten-free, <laughs> anything distilled is gluten-free. Yes. As long as nothing post-production has been added yeah. to the distillate. So it's raw chicken? Raw it's, turkey? A, it's a raw turkey yeah. breast, so I mean, it's alcohol, good. it will get cooked. Yeah. For the time of the process ends. Unbelievable. Yeah, and and it what, gets are, so what are you creamy. getting from it? It's, it's creamy. good mouthfeel, right? Yeah. yeah, and it's so creamy. It's very smooth. It's, it's actually really How good. How in the hell did someone come across that? I know. Right? They were <laughs> drinking this all day. I, I always say <laughs> maybe, maybe the turkey was flying and just get, <laughs> maybe. There, just get there and they're like, oh, my God, this tastes delicious. Yeah. What if? Well, it was probably a chicken, right, <laughs> at first. And then somebody said, there's tons of chickens running around. We got to make it special. Well, What's if we don't find right? any turkeys? Let's no, it, it was probably a bat first. <laughs> Or saying whatever. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really, really good one. I mean, it's tons of different species yeah. that you can find. You know, uh, Madre Quiche is another mm -hmm. one really good. It's very unique and different uh, species, but it's hard to get a lot of those. So you can make a small batches mm -hmm. like, you know, what we do with really good stuff. Uh, but that one is very specific for us in Mexico. It is, you know, breast, heart, everything coming from here is with with your heart is with love is for a very a specific events like if it's a wedding they make an, a specific batch for the family with the turkey breast to have in that event so yeah. yeah it is you are such an interesting person you totally Am I? you really yeah. are i mean li I, like i just take it in i want to learn more who where do you where do you get all this from i mean your parents must be really interesting people too my uh, mom never cooks okay <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't come from my mom right. my dad drinks used to yeah. not anymore but right. uh no it's more you know i always where'd you get your curiosity from because you just dug in at certain point to learn i mean i grew up with my dad i i know from fixing my own cars to ride a horse to jump in the motorcycle to kind of do all the men stuff yeah. like i changed the oils on my car and all of that so i grew up with my dad and i think my dad is always like try to find a way uh, to learn more because we don't born knowing everything. And he's always like, well, you don't know how to do it. Well, you need to figure it out. Yeah. That's his thing. And I always have it on my head. Well, you don't know how. Then it's got to be a way. Figure it out. And I always wanted to do that with everything. Like what are the purpose in life? Yeah. If you don't have something to give, 
And if you, I always say one, one thing, and I say, if you're going to do things, do it right or don't fuck with. It's just I one say, or the other here's, one. I don't say it just as quite as eloquently as you, but <laughs> I say it takes just as much energy to do something wrong as it does to do something right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so figure it out how to do it right. See, yeah. Figure it out how you do it right. The so, second one, though, uh, did you, you did, know you, did I, anyone I comment know. on the second one? I don't mean to derail you, but wow. That's the herbal one. You taste a lot of like eucalyptus trees, uh, oranges, peppers. Why uh, would I like this one better than the first one? It's just different, it's, but it's I like so it a different. little bit better. Yeah, I think it has more complexity. And into this one, it makes you think a lot about like, oh, what is this? And then it hits you later other flavors. So it's not like one thing that is, mm-hmm. you know, on a specific fruit or it's just like it keeps going and going. Yeah. Peppery and all of that stuff. I'm tasting uh, hearts of palm for some. Yep. That. Wow. That is really. really that's there's a lot. Going I on need there. to dig deeper. Well, Greg, you might want to try this because she says it I makes you it. think. At the end of the I, night. So it's like, should I go home with this girl? <laughs> Does it make you think that clearly? Right? Oh, he, I mean, after the whole bottle, you, I don't want to tell you what you're going to have in your mind. <laughs> so these spirits, I, I love drinking them neat, right? But, uh, with uh, whiskeys and different variations of scott you'll, scott, you'll add a little water to it maybe or open it up or some people I like it. I just drink cute. that with the Pacifico. Right? It just... So I was going to ask, would you, like an old-fashioned... You're in a shot. Would, yeah. would, would <laughs> you not make a cocktail simple. with this at all? Uh, I would make cocktails with espadine because okay. it's the more, you know, the other ones are made for sipping. The, like, you got to understand, you yeah. know, I, I on the back of these labels, we're going to have something inside that is saying, tell me your story. Mm-hmm. You know, because I always, when you drink something like that, Something come in your mind and you want to talk about your family. You want to talk about your marriage. You want to talk about, I don't know, whatever. And, you know, it's like, have a drink, sit, talk to me and tell me your story. I do Basically, feel like confessing a couple of things. <laughs> right? I don't know what it'll be, but. <laughs> I'm a warm She's drink. very Catholic, so it's okay. <laughs> Shit, I've never been in church. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I fell on that one. <laughs> Tomorrow night's going to be. A good one. We've got people commenting on the stream. If you see something of interest, Jay, just pop in and do that. Uh, We are three minutes past our time, but we have one last to sample. We have one more, yes. And this one is the one that is super. It's going to be smooth. Uh, This is my favorite. Does this one? you have room? Yeah, it smells. I can use that same glass. This one smells a bit different, so. You got it? Yeah. I'll tell you guys, that last one, though, that really was. Because the first one comes on, like you said, a little hot Mm -hmm. to me. But the second one. Just finishes so nice. There you go, Brian. This one's my favorite. So nice. Of all of those. Topala, it's, it's very, you know, it's, it's a unique thing. Ooh. Different right off the nose. Yes. Do it's, you get that? It's floral. Jay? It's uh, it's a lot of honey on it. Mm, definitely. Seems That one gave me the goosebumps. I know. I like that one. <laughs> Seems a little less refined to yeah. me. Or am I wrong? About and it's that? not so spicy. Yeah. You know, it's more like very mild flavor. You don't even think about the smoke in this one, Mash, because you mm. get, you know, the sweet sweetness. Yeah, that one is very straightforward. That would be neat. and it's consistent. The mm-hmm. the flavor is consistent through and through. A float in oh, a no. coin margarita with that would be oh, yeah. delicious. Yep. Hey, Chef uh, Steve uh, Cat began. Chimed in the stream, and he says, uh, where can I purchase these? Uh, it's going to be ready on the stays at March 6th at some of my friend's restaurants on September. March 6th? Mar- m- this March September. Six, yeah. Marzix Foods. Mar-six oh, Marzix. Marzix uh, yeah. wine yeah. store. Mar-six. Everything is coming on September into the state, and yeah. Okay. Or you can go to Working Class or Super Mega or my new bar. It is a cantina specific for this brand. It's Cantina oh. Loca. Do you, need, oh, do you need any bourbon there? <laughs> yes, of <Okay>. course, baby. <laughs> Tell us about it. Um, well, first, go and see me at Super Mega for brunch. We're going to start doing brunch yes, to ma'am. save our businesses. So I hope I see you guys. The first save one our is, business brunch. I yes, like it. exactly. So it's going to be this Sunday, and then um, it's only two every month, and then that's it. But this bar is on Sunay and 29. It's called Cantina Loca. It's from Mexico City. We have a big tree inside, just like all the buildings in Mexico City. And it's going to be really good food and drinks. And I have a tasting room to kind of 
educate people about agave spirit so they understand we're going to probably put some videos when i doing all the harvest and how we do the whole process and where we get the water from on the on oaxaca let us help you with that take us with you put us in yeah. your pocket let's, let's go taste <laughs> definitely are you getting out there with the well, machete and cutting down yes we do all the, everything <sighs> there when we go we we have videos i think mark antonation put a lot of the videos when okay. we're there cutting the uh, the piñas, which is the uh -huh. agave, uh, and then how we roast everything, and yeah. How fun. She's great. Congratulations. I, Thank I you. Know. I need some good rum there, too. You, I've always had a crush on you. You know that. Ever oh, since we met, I I've know. always like, yeah. But we used to be young and beautiful, baby. <laughs> first time, first time I met Chef, we were at. This just in. Brian has a live-in girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, it's fine. We're friends. <laughs> we're friends. We met at Buen Provecho. Buen Provecho, yeah. We do she a goes, what's in the bag? And I said, it's, I've got some rum. She's I'll give try me your some. rum. Yeah, give me some of that. Give me some. <laughs> you, we did you like I rum? Just, oh, it's yeah. sad. This is the first year in like four years we're not going to go through that. I know. I know. It's sad. All the shared events we used to do is what keep our community together and support our businesses. And unfortunately, this year suck and we cannot do any of those. But we always find a way. That's the beauty of this. You know, we find a way mm -hmm. to keep in contact with uh, community and doing events like tomorrow. Yeah. So we can reconnect and make something fun and good well speaking of charities we give a portion of each dinner to a chef's charity of their choice do you have a charity that stands out in your mind right now oh my god i have too many i'll, oh. I'll probably email you that but one of my favorites so during this COVID, we deliver food to different places we send uh, you know the frontliners they paid us to build these kid meals and then we deliver mm -hmm. uh, my servers went and dropped the food and they come back crying and I'm like, what the hell? Did they treat you bad? Did they say something wrong? You never know these days. People don't have patience. No, it was for Mother's Day, and we delivered food to kids that they've been abandoned from their mothers. Mm -hmm. And they never have a food from mom. And it was, I mean, we all in tears and crying. Those kids make cards with they recreate working class and super mega logo. And they tell us, stay strong. Be happy, oh, and we just like. Oh, uh, oh, I guess I cannot give up. We need to fucking keep going and <laughs> yes. make our business. You know. You make me want to cry right I now. Know. She I mean, gets us uh, drunk and makes us cry. Of, I know, right? <laughs> all of these things are important because you don't know that those places actually oh. exist. Yes. And you go on Mother's Day, and they don't have a mom, and they never see one, and they say, "I never have chicken and mashed potatoes on my life," and I'm just like, "Can we just bring?" fucking fried chicken and mashed potatoes <laughs> every day to these kids like it's you know i wish i can afford to do that yeah. all the time but i think that's important that what you guys doing is always donated to those that they actually need it so okay. yeah wow okay now we have to send you out here with some food too right the, yeah today? everything all of this I is know. mine yeah. how are we gonna admit because you gotta jolt out of here we gotta finish up the I'm show gonna load up you're gonna you're gonna help I'm her gonna load, load up. up okay but we'll we can finish the show yeah well i know what she's got to get okay I'll That's get fine. We'll figure How it about out. if we drop it all off to you? That's good, too. Are <laughs> you going down to the kitchen? You're going to Super Mega? I'm going to Super Mega. Okay. I can put as much as I can, and then you can deliver the rest. Okay. 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 We'll do that. Thank you so Compromise. much for having me here. Are you kidding nice me? to see you it's always. Great to see you. Awesome. Let's drink. Say something nice about this gentleman over here because he's coming one? up next. Oh, Nick, I love you, baby. I love you too, baby. <laughs> we work together, and he's one of my kids, and he's amazing, and he's been doing amazing things here, and I just love him so much. That's cool. Oh, All right, Jay, you're not going anywhere. I, you I'm stick around. You're probably gonna have to kick me out. Well, so. no, it's that. You remember the bottle that you just be careful who you drink it with. Yeah, that's me and you, <laughs> honey. I'm not coming home <laughs> <That's right. laughs> for a couple months. <laughs> I was gonna ask him, what are you doing after the shows, <laughs> sweetheart? Right. Jay, you set the break. <laughs> we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll take a break in, here in, quickly. In five seconds. It's yeah. a good one, and uh, I encourage you. Summer Dinner Series, that's what it's all about, summerdinnerseries.com. Summer Dinner Series. We could didn't I, even get to taste or try this could, tequila. I'm oh, going to try it. Tomorrow night? Could I talk into I have a feeling you're not going to let her go home with that. <laughs> that's what I Chef feel me. like. <laughs> let me have a have little taste of that it, for sure. You know. Taking photos. <laughs> this is great in studio. We're taking photo opportunity right now and uh, okay. this is good okay i still have to uh, work uh, out uh, today <laughs> if i get too much into this there'll be no working out take a break and we'll come back uh jay if you're all set 
Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We're going to take a break. Come back. The Modern Eater Show continues. Hi, I'm Charlie Gotten Kenny, brewmaster at Brews Beers. Our all new Abbey four pack contains the main products of Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So, uh, with the four pack, you'll get a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple. One of each. Most monastery breweries will make two to four of these. Some of them make all, all four. And American craft breweries, like brews that specialize in Belgian beers, will make multiple versions of the big four throughout the year. So where can you get an Abbey four-pack? Well, you can get it at either brews location, 67th and Pecos in Midtown, or in the East Colfax neighborhood at Colfax in York. You can also find them at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver area. So get yours today and take home some Belgian-style badassery. Hey, guys. It's Brian Rizzuto with Encore Energy, the guy who saves your businesses money on natural gas. I know these are crazy, crazy times right now. So while your business is working on increasing your sales, let me work on saving you guys money on your natural gas. I make it as easy as possible. Just provide 12 months' worth of natural gas bills to me. I'll do the rest. I know you're really busy, so let me get to work for you. You can reach me at 720-245-5771. I look forward to hearing from you guys, and let me try to save you some money in these crazy times. Bye. We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area, but if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. <laughs> hey, Dave Thibodeau here. <laughs> Hey, friends of the Modern Eater, this is Dave Thibodeau from Ska Brewing and Peach Street Distillers. I wanted to let you know that our new brew distillery is up and running again in Boulder. And we've got a uh, great selection of Ska beers, nearly 30 on tap. We've also got all of our Peach Street spirits available. A great mixology program that we brought down from the, from the Western Slope and Palisade. We're open limited hours, Wednesday through Friday from 3 to 10. And then we open up earlier at 10 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday and get some brunch action rolling. We have two great patios. Socially distant seating is available. And you can always check for more information at scostreet.com and hope we become your new favorite neighborhood spot. And I'd like to meet you there in the not too distant future for a beer or a drink soon. So take care, be healthy and stay strong. And I'll talk to you later. Hi guys, it's Cody Ann from Aspen Baking Company. We specialize in fresh, preservative-free, amazing bread. But with all the food news, go right here to the Modern Eater. All right, welcome back to the show. We've got some good stuff here. Uh, Chef Nick Kaiser is here with us along with Jay Johnson. But right now I need to tell you about Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. I mean, what more can I say? Well, I'll tell you. He does uh, custom installations of faucets and tab lines everywhere. Uh, do you need to add a line? Beer, wine, water, kombucha, coffee? Something crazy. You name it. You Ju want your customers to pour out of one of their taps? <laughs> Juices? Well, here's the thing. Brewers want, their, uh, brewers want their beer to taste like the beer should taste, and that's Jeff Rourke's job. Uh, 20 years in the business. He's very, very trusted. He just did a build out at Slater's 5050. He did Monarch Casino, Tap 14. I could go on and on. And I will. Resolute Brewing Company, <laughs> Brews Beers. Beast and Brews. Beast and Brews. 100 taps. This gentleman is it. Okay, give him a call. If you're pouring in a fish of beer, what are you doing, boys? You're pouring, pouring your, your money, money down, down the, the drain. drain. Why would you do that? Don't be tacky. Get it back online. It's an easy phone call away. 720-272-3809. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. I need a pen. I, I know. Slow down. 720. You got that part. I got that. 272-3809. Beautiful. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke and A-Plus Beverage Solutions. Okay, here's a good one. Now, um, Nick, you're settling in. Chef, good to see you. 
Thanks. Thanks yeah. for having us on. No doubt. Um, d- interesting circumstances that you're here, but uh, nonetheless, you're here, and uh, life's about moving forward. And an illustrious past. You've got a great past. Jay Johnson, Bear Creek, tomorrow night. You're bringing two drink, two cocktails? Two cocktails. Who's coming with you? Who's your date? I am bringing my wife. Are you really? Ah. You'll get to, have you met her before? I have not. You're going to be like that dude way out kicked his coverage. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> oh, yeah. You always say that when we get you at home. Oh, you it's true. That. It's She's an unlucky woman. <laughs> She married me for my I, money. And I my find life. you to be a very delightful sweetheart. Of a I, man. I, I, I'm a pretty nice fella when it gets right down to You're it. You're a good guy. You don't catch me on a bad uh, day. Your dog's name is, hang on, hang on. Damn it. I knew Millie. it. Millie. Millie. Your the dog's killer name Yorkie. is Damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Da- damn it, Millie. Yeah. Damn it, Millie. Damn it, Millie. Yeah. Damn it, Millie. Damn it, Millie. Yeah. Uh, how's Millie? Millie's good. good. She uh, got in a fight with a German Shepherd. Oh, no. Yeah. That doesn't sound good. Millie's- no, Millie did not come out on that one very well. Ooh, but yeah. uh, she ran out the door and attacked it. So she she's little and mean like my Good. kids, and she got what she deserved. Just like me. I'll ask, how's Millie? You know, Millie died. <laughs> <laughs> Millie got eaten. <laughs> like, she's okay. She had a bath yesterday. We're fine. Oh, good. Um, the distillery. Yes. If things are weird right now, but how are they for you? You know, it's uh, there's positives in some areas, and, of course, there's negatives in others. I mm-hmm. think that's just – you could say that's business mm-hmm. in, in today's climate. Um, still working on a to-go platform only, mm-hmm. uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, we're selling individual cocktails, uh, in cute little honey bears. I meant to grab one as I walked out the door, but I didn't get that taken care of. Um, in the, seriously in the, they're honey. in honey bears <laughs> and we are getting some of our bangers in there, you know, uh-huh. a red panda bear, for instance, individual servings of hollow mango, which is another popular one. And then we're ramping that up into 750 mils uh, bottles. So that's for like uh, a party if you're having a, um, a barbecue. You party? Know, ten or less. Ten or less. <laughs> 750, you might need two. Um, but you can, you know, share those with your friends. Yeah. And then we've paired with some uh, local businesses, uh, Rocky Mountain Soda, The Real Dill. Really? Yep. Sell cocktail kits. So cool. we've done relatively well with that. And um, people are staying home and drinking lots more than they normally do mm-hmm. so sales at the stores are strong that's great yeah so i love that can't complain too much and you guys have done such a great job with your brand thank you very i much. mean truly we kind of grew up together we did this show and you've light years ahead of us makes you wonder i think we're going to throw in the towel just because of you <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i could help <laughs> glad you could help absolutely uh it's it's weird out there restaurant accounts right yeah is that strange so what we've done is we've given so, uh, essentially, our whiskey is spoken for every month, which is a great problem to have. I mean, Big time. Um, so we pretty much know w- how much whiskey is going out. We, we have another building that we've been trying to get online since last July. Uh, it's just real difficult permitting and um, getting things up and running in for a barrel storage. It's, mm-hmm. you know, there's Close by? It's just Same a, building? A door and a half down. So, it's, just, it's right there on Acoma Street. So, we're going to have a larger footprint there. But we've decided – we figured out that our – Room from growth for growth were in our clear spirits. Mm-hmm. So really, we've, we've seen interesting, extraordinary growth in our yeah. rum portfolio. Vodka's really taking off. Um, so we've created a program where we'll come to your cocktail bar or restaurant and say, "Here's ten easy cocktails. We have figured out what the cocktails mm-hmm. are. Yeah. We've we've measured out all uh, per drink cost, and we're giving you all the products. If you want plastic cups branded with your company on it and uh dual branded with bear creek and you agree to sell those cocktails to go in those glasses we'll provide those as as smart as a service to yeah. you so we're trying to be proactive it's but that whiskey. sounds like a big distributor brother i mean I'll, I'll be honest i've been on the other side of that in the restaurant right they, they give you menus and glasses yeah. and all that jazz holy smokes yeah. how did you step that game up well i have a very creative uh, team behind me, uh, my sales guys. We kept our sales guys, even though we moved into a dis- distribution house. And those guys sort of tax themselves with coming up with this program. And it. it's you know, it's some outline costs. There's some printed menus, of course, you know, and and plastic cups are relatively affordable. So I mean, it, it's not neon signs, and it's not you know, um, huge barbecue grill giveaways or anything like that. But it's what we can do. To help you and it is helpful. and streamline sure. and 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 sort of take, you're, you're still serving a craft cocktail, but we're bringing some of those prices more in line with 
a bigger distribution house. Fantastic. For a good example. I, I hate to circle back around, but you said something interesting about the clear spirits. Does that mean that the whiskey market's a little saturated right now? No, no, no. That just means that we only have a set amount of whiskey that we can sell. Oh, okay. So until we utilize that new space and um, you know fill barrels, lay those barrels, and let them age, we are sort of beholden to the number, right? 306 barrels in there at any given time. So uh, Jeff has it still running daily you know and what we could produce um on top of what's going into barrels is really where we can start to move the needle mm. is it just vodka and rum. vodka rum. and rum so and that's it none two, of the gin not your white whiskey we do make some white whiskey that that has sort of a cult following but we don't make a gin don't make a gin I don't like make that. a gin none of us drink gin so it's just one of those things. Do you drink gin, Nick? <laughs> yeah, that's you my, do? That's yeah. my favorite spirit. We'll send you home with a <laughs> bottle of the Deviation or uh, Meridium yeah. spirit. Well, but I, I think it's really interesting where Jay's, where Jay's going with this. I'm interested on how the, how do you know that what you're going to sell already? You, you just sort of glazed over that, and you're like, we know. We're lucky. But oh, how so, do you know? So just, I mean, with what we have, as so you've heard the term allocation. Yep. So basically all our whiskey is allocated. So let's say... Pick a, pick a major box store, mm-hmm. say Tipsy's or Total Wine or Molly's. They know that they get four cases of rye whiskey a month. And that's it because that's all we can afford to mm-hmm. give them and still honor all of our commitments that we have across okay. the state. So when I say we know what the number is, that's what we sell every month because that's what we have to sell. Yeah. To sell. That so month. you don't have a surplus? Not of whiskey. Interesting. Uh, uh, sh- the straight bourbon we're doing okay. And, you know, once we get online – with the new building, we'll be able to even out some of those numbers because yeah. some of the things that we did as uh, sort of supplemental whiskeys, if you will, mm-hmm. turned out to be some of our top sellers. So, wow. you know, and, and some of that. It, would, does that mean a blend? Is that like a code word for blend? No, not at all. Supplemental whiskey? No, like our weeded bourbon, perhaps. Okay. It's a good example. All right. So like a straight bourbon, our straight bourbon is rye. Um, it's, excuse me. It's corn, rye, and malted barley, whereas the weeded is corn, wheat, and malted barley. So... We always knew that the first whiskey I described was going to be the the big dog, right? So then we created this other um, sort of yin to that yang, but put more time in production on the the straight bourbon, where the weeded bourbon has taken off. A lot of people in the business prefer that to the straight bourbon, but the laymen tend to go because it's a little bit sweeter, the straight bourbon. But the rye and the wheat, they sell really well on their own. Anything new in the trends? Where I mean, and, and not I'm not talking flavor, Jay. I'm yep. saying, is anyone doing something that's you, you way need, out there? You need to drink before the show. Ever he's he's loaded, man. He's <laughs> up on the pr- on the pound stance <laughs> right there. He's <laughs> forward, <laughs> forward leaning. He's, he's, like, he's giving you a good interview. I'm right like, now. I want to <laughs> dig in, man. So, so. his head looks like a light bulb right now. <laughs> I think, um, and just studying some of the the national trends, rum is making a a strong push is it it is it just even you know um you can get great rum well reminds you of uh a vacation rum to me anyway i think a lot of people yeah you can even is is that a a reach or (laughs) no 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 and i i see the flip side of that i see a lot of people have gone on vacation and drank Uh a lot of rum that probably was a resort rum of not highest quality and then had a real bad next day and then they're like i don't drink rum and it's like you know what let me try to turn you on to this rum. And you, I've turned a lot of people on. They're like, you know, actually, this is this is a, not what I was expecting. You know, I, and, and I'll hear it today because she watches the show. My mom's going to bring up the bottle of rum that she thinks you promised her like three Christmases ago. I think. Or whatever. I, could prob- I probably can facilitate that today. Today? Yeah. It might not let make it Let me ask you, her. though, would you do an aged rum? Would you ever do? Because so, I've had some 12-year, yeah. some the Matsu. Matsu Malin or Mats- Matsu Salin or something like that. It starts with an M. Very famous rum company. Why would you want an aged rum? Well, I mean, you, it, you know, it, it's sort of you pull some of the magic out of the barrel like you would with whiskey. Mm-hmm. We do have some gold rum laid down. Um, you know, I don't know how long we'll let that go, but it's been down almost two years now. Oh, really? So okay. we do a, a cast strength rum that we take our silver rum Love at an overproof, put it in a used bourbon barrel. Mm-hmm. Um, and that program... Yeah, we would pull that at like 18 months, two years. We had a barrel of that went three years. And we're like, okay, we can't release anything less than three years because it's such a superior product once it gets north of that point. And hopefully we get to be at five and six years for that mm-hmm. cask strength aged rum. Wow, okay. Yep. I'm going to have to put my name on one of those bottles. It, it is 
and each barrel is a little bit different because we've always used that as a guest barrel program because we didn't have bourbon in the beginning. So we got some from Al Laws down the street. We have a, a Bruck barrel or two that have rolled through there. Um, we got one of Peach Street's six-year-old uh, bourbon barrels that we filled with that last year. So each one's got a little bit of nuance to it. Is that where a spice comes from? Or what, what is the spice from? Is that just cheap? And someone threw in a bunch of spice. How long do you want this one to go today? Oh, sorry. But we're, we're going till <laughs> 9 tonight, man. How long we started, you want we this started one? with the alcohol. I'm man, going back to Man, I get to this our guy going. Show. It's like, man, he wound up like a top. So, it's just <laughs> wait till it goes. Go ahead. So spice rum, uh, typically vanilla forward, right? Vanilla and, and orange forward. Um, most larger, large produced, um, industrial produced uh, spice rum. It'll be extracts. It'll be flavor additives. Ours is a natural infusion, so um, we peel the pith of the orange. We get uh, vanilla beans from Madagascar, and I've probably said this on the show. It's more expensive. Vanilla beans more expensive than cocaine mm-hmm. right now, which yeah. is crazy. It really is. Yeah. Some guy told me that once. But it's three beans for twenty bucks right now. <laughs> yeah. I'll sell you some outside. That's right. You know, you I got to have cash. I got a guy. <laughs> and then um, you know the orange peel, the vanilla bean, black peppercorn, some ginger, some cinnamon. So we, it's a 14-day infusion. So we just actually put it in a cheesecloth and, and dip it in there. So, wow. Bam. Yeah. So it's not flavored. It's just the natural. Uh, it's the infusion of the flavor. Yeah. Love that. I love it, man. What else you got? I, I'm going to back up. No, I, I'll tell you, we deal with a lot of whiskey guys. Yeah. And some of them, uh, rum's an afterthought. So I never really get to ask well, and dig I mean, into the rum all, side of things. I, I, uh, let's go. Name me some other rum producers. Well, our boy Rocker. Does rum. He does. Yep. Yeah. He does rum. But, and, it, but that, I don't think he's making it. But that's as deep as I'm going to go. Is he making it? <laughs> like, no. He no. gets it from the Caribbean. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I'm speaking out of school. I don't think that. so either. Um, Montana in Crested Butte. They do, they're doing a rum. They do some rum. Okay. Um, so they had YOLO rum. I don't know if they're still in production, but that was a rum company here. Yeah. Um, Downslope does a vanilla rum. That's pretty tasty. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but as far as, you know, we, we, we make a lot of rum, comparatively speaking, to other distilleries. And we sell a lot of rum. Smiley's rum. not making any rum? No, he always no. did agave spirits. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know. I was wondering the same thing. Oh, uh, I think, you know what? I think his, his answer to that rum question is, I don't like rum. Yeah. So I don't make well, it. Well, just like what Jay said about gin. Gen. Yeah. 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 I think yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. right. Yeah. Are there anyone out there that you would say, hey, there's a kick at but rum. Um, so, and of course, you asked me that, and I completely blanked on it's the name okay, of the rum. Man. He's he's just reaching now. There is a rum. <laughs> really no, I mean, I'm just curious now. because I have anyway, had some. Really, I've, I've got a bottle of Cuban that my girlfriend brought home from Cuba. Yeah, you I do. mean, I've got. Yeah, man, that was, <laughs> uh, that was on Super camera. Well, it was weird. a handle. Of, <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend brought some rum back from you know. We. Uh, <laughs> I met some. I met a guy <laughs> Sorry, in. Sorry, Nick. I um, really apologize. Chicago, and he was a music producer, and he produced uh, Veruca Salt's album. I don't know if you remember that. Oh yeah, I do. Yep. Okay, so he was like, it's music, and so I started talking to him. I'm like, what are you doing here? And he, Parse rum. That's what it is. It's a Colombian rum that he imports, but it is. Fire. They have an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old, and the eight-year-old to me, I prefer that. See, I like younger age rums too, man. I've, I've always. Stayed to like the single digits, and like the twelve years starts to get a little too sweet to me. It's, like, it's a little damn bit it! Now viscous. I need to get up on my rum game. Yeah. Well, get Jay, isn't that thing with the age spirits? Isn't it a little bit of a wives' tale when you have a you know a forty-year whiskey or something like that, and everybody's like, "Oh, far out," and the novelty of it, you know, lives up to the reputation because it's forty years or whatever it is. But as far as tastes go, don't most whiskey distillers and age spirits distillers now kind of like be like, "Listen, man, you're not sweet, getting much more." The sweet spot's right here. You know, you can have the third. Thirty dollars or the thirty-year Scotch or whatever it is, yeah. but that's a novelty. Thing. Like it's twelve past to eighteen, its prime, right? You know? you know, it's you know, and it's different in each region. Here in Colorado, you know, we have a, a pretty interesting climate. Um, yeah, you go twenty-four years, you nothing's in the you're barrel. Gonna, <laughs> you'll lick some dust out of the bottom of that barrel, but we don't have it's any like rock sugar. Right? <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Just scrape some of it up, put it in your cheek. But uh, we uh, we don't have any air conditioning in our rack room, so. Um, when it's hot, it's hot. When it's cold, it's cold. It really forces that in and out of the, the distillate in and out of the wood. We can get flavors in two years that it might take some areas five years to get to. So 
that's sort of what I personally have been on a crusade is changing people's preconceived notions of what age statements actually mean because they're like, oh, this is really good for a young bourbon. And you're like, that's three years old at f- at a mile high, right? And that's going to be different sure. than <laughs> Please. a six-year-old in Tennessee. You know, it's just – so a lot – I'm trying to change a lot of the, the – uh, misinformation, if you will. Mm-hmm. It, Chef, go ahead. It seems like there's a lot more humidity in Colorado this year, right? I mean, has anybody felt that over yes. the summer? Right? Huge. Obviously, way more moisture and rain and everything like that. Have you found that aging and evaporates and all that stuff is, is changing the aging process and changing the flavor profiles? Have it, you had to modify? Well, yeah. I, I will say this. When we first started, we had trouble sourcing quality barrels. Um, just because we were new, there was a lot more people starting to, to do what we Are do. They, is there still a scarcity? Oh. No, not like not like it was. So we have we have quality barrels coming in, and we found more than anything else that is really what will um, sort just of the actual oak itself. The oak, it's it, a yeah. better constructed barrel with higher quality oak. Will sort of sort of some it'll mitigate some of those changes. Yeah, like if we have a season that's a little bit has more humidity, but and it has been a lot more humid this summer. I mean, it feels like fucking South Carolina, mm-hmm. not Denver these days. Mm, morning, yeah. I played golf this morning. It was just like shit, man. I couldn't stop sweating. Yeah, yeah. man, you're on the course a lot. Three days a week. You I got love some, it. a little bit of time. <laughs> I've been playing that much too. <laughs> oh, look at you looking good. <laughs> my nice, yeah, my you nice have olive skin coming through. <laughs> that's <laughs> right, man. I, obviously, we talked forever. Tomorrow you'll be there with the wife. Yes, we can confirm that she exists. She did. She does. <laughs> well, tomorrow night <laughs> we'll see you and the misses, and uh, we start. You know, if you get there about six o'clock. That'd I'll be probably be a little bit earlier because I want to make sure and macerate the strawberries and stuff that go in that mojito. So thank you. But we might want to say to the guests, Greg, if you're a guest, please come at six thirty because yeah, don't come early because as a guest, it's hard because we've got to keep yeah. people in certain areas. Plus, we, we don't have any food and drinks. Yeah, for we, you the yet. bar's not open. It's but we appreciate. But, you yeah, being we anxious. love. We want to give you yeah. the love, yeah. but it's just That's it's sure. harder as a guest. All right, for the sake yeah. of Jay, here's what we need to do. We will break off. So thank you. See you tomorrow. Okay, you're off. Pick you up rock, the kids. Uh, and then we're going to come back. Chef Nick Kaiser's here with us, uh, formerly Vesta Dipping Grill, and uh, off to new adventures. We're just going to catch up with you, man, cool. see what's going on. Uh, a lot. It's interesting. Vesta's one of those places, and for the longest time, um, just many, many, go, many, many people's go to, right? Oh, my gosh. And uh, I, that should have been one of the first date places that anyone took their dates. Vesta, yeah, back in the day. 20, mm-hmm. 23 years voted number one in, in Denver. Was it really? Oh, yeah. For it's sure. interactive. I did not that, know that. that. That should be the Vesta Award from Westford every year. I'm putting that out there right now. Right now? Well, yeah. because it's it, because of the format, Small Bites, and the way you guys served it, it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, if, you're, if you're concerned about how you're scarfing food down yeah. on your first date, you were, you were in the right place. That's all I'll say. And a top-notch staff and food. Yeah. and just yeah. Well, at Josh, is, you guys have had great. The yeah. people that have what been What was all you would there, say? I, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Break. You can come back. Locked and loaded. That's Brian Freeman, Greg Hollenbach, Jay Parker, uh, Chef Dana Rodriguez in studio today. and uh, Still have a crush on her, man. See you tomorrow, Jay Jones. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll be there with bells on. You bet. Okay, we'll come back. Chef Dick Kaiser right here. The Modern Eater Show continues. Hey, guys. Chris Johnson here, owner of Rome Sausage, your hyper-local source for all things sausage awesomeness. My family is proud to carry on the fine traditions of Rome's founder, Jerry Rome, by producing a variety of amazing sausage in small batches, with an eye on quality, not quantity. Every batch is made here in the great state of Colorado by hand mixing spices, utilizing lean cuts of pork to make an outstanding product. Sourcing ingredients and materials locally, we are committed to supporting local vendors, chefs, restaurants, and the entire Colorado food scene. Getting hungry yet? Brats, Italian, breakfast, hot Polish, green chili, chicken apple, and the world's best chorizo. You can source all of our sausage through a variety of food service distributors. If your distributor doesn't carry it, call us. We'll come direct. You want a custom item? We'll do that too. Samples, and of course, sausage jokes, can be had by contacting me directly at chris at romesausage.com or by phone at 303-296-7663. The modern eater loves Rome sausage, and I know you will too. (laughs) Hey, Zach Ryder here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, Let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening. 
from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey guys, it's Modern Eater. This is Rich O'Brien with Elevation Food Service Reps. I'm here with one of our sales, a newly appointed hospitality specialist, Kalina Hillier. Hi. And we're here in our showroom, and uh, we've got our bar set up. We've got a lot of chai. Come see us. Come see what we've got, and Kalina can help you guys out in the world of hospitality with anything. Um, take a little journey into the 38th Avenue kitchen just to see what's going on in here. And uh, as we come in here, I'm noticing. Uh, Howard, what are you doing? Nothing. Sean, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Look at this beautiful equipment in here. Look at this beautiful... Chefs, restaurateurs, anybody that has anything to do with food service, come on over. We'd love to help you with menu development. Love to show you everything about equipment. And uh, maybe we'll even have a few pops. I'll defer if we can. Back to the show in just a second, but before we do that, I want to talk to you about something that's life-changing. It's bread, Aspen Baking Company. Aspenbaking.com is where you go to find all the most delicious and fresh bread here in Colorado, but you're not going to find any chemicals or preservatives or artificial coloring. They don't get down like that. If you want to hashtag, you hashtag, how's your Aspen? Boxed lunches, ordering direct, ordering online. Amazon Fresh, are you an Amazon Fresh person? You can do Amazon Fresh too, and I'll tell you what, you should. And you should take a trip to uh, AspenBaking.com immediately. If you're like me, you love bread. And if you love bread, you love Aspen Baking. I can't say enough about the guys over there. Uh, Jeffrey, Hollis, and Cody Ann, they're the dream team, AspenBaking.com. They've been baking fresh bread in Colorado since 1994. Back to Greg Hollenbeck, Brian Freeman, and Chef Nick K- Kaiser. Almost had it. <laughs> you almost did. Thanks, Jay. Um, I'm going to do – I want to play this little clip, if you don't mind. It's just this right here. Oh, yeah. You mind if um, I play that? Go for it. Okay. I need you to p- uh, plug that in. I don't need an audio, oh. and it's quick. It's 10 seconds. Oh, okay. Well, Just uh, show the screen. Give, give, me two, give me two seconds here. Yeah. <laughs> no hey, problem. one of the cool things about Aspen Baking – their breakfast sandwiches, I heard a rumor, they're using Rome sausage. Yes, they are. Um, right now, okay. Chef, uh, <laughs> Chef Nick Kaiser here with us. And I, I want to do this. So everybody in town knows already that um, Vesta has closed down. And it's interesting because it kind of, there, there's been some, you know, it's like race scenes, right? And, and people are just taking, I think we're hardened. We're hardened. But Vesta, that hit. Yeah. That hit us. It hit all of us. Um yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a weird summer right now. Uh, it and is, just, and just with Vetna, Vesta's litany of success and just twenty three years, and you know, I I was fortunate enough to be part of it for the last four. But um, yeah, it kind of hit the, it hit the scene it, it like, like a rock, man. It did. I mean, you, you lose these landmark places like you said, Racines and Twentieth yeah. Street Cafe dropped, mm-hmm. and um, and daily you don't know. You it's like you brace yourself, like what's next. But yeah, I mean, literally everybody p- took pause, like Vesta. Yeah, like are we that and that, and and I think that's, it was almost like, right now. Now, like okay, we knew it was serious, but now we know it's serious. Yeah, am, am I am I wrong with that? No, it, it's crushing, man. I'll tell you, it's one of the. My girlfriend and I was one of the places we went for one of our first dates. Yeah, I mean, and many many people really first date. Yeah, with Heather, Heather. and Fantastic. and you know, and that was and also like I mean, I wonder what's happening over at Sixth Avenue. We have got a great friend with a, a restaurant over there. All of these old restaurants. I mean. Potager, they're they're screaming help people mm. that have been in this business for a long time. Yeah. I'm gonna which, play a yeah, which yeah I got a 10 second video and it's basically <laughs> so I've I've heard of salt over the shoulder. I've a few different super. Sure. I haven't seen this one, man. <laughs> uh, you tell me what the, what am I showing here? Uh, you're showing the <laughs> spi- you're showing yeah. the spirit of Esta, man. Uh, that's what we do. We have fun. We like the community. Uh, we support everything that happens with us at this point. Um, 
God. You're lucky it wasn't on a day of batter or like, because I've seen it with so many people yeah. leaving. They get flour, batter, yeah, like so, whatever. Oh, that's, so, that's not even, that's not even scratching the surface yeah. at this point. <laughs> and and that, that, that was just basically an ode to you. That was and, Def Leppard at uh, Coors Field. Uh, so we decided to do a little promo. Um, pour some sugar Leonard on Leonard Skinner, Def, Def Leppard, and we did some pour, pour some sugar on me. Um, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know the reach. I don't know if it brought people in, but, you know, at that point when you're down in that, that area, I, Vesta, was, Vesta was the cornerstone, uh, yeah. you know, and it, it's, it's a destination place. It's a date spot. It's, it's 23 years in a row at best day spot. Um, you know, and and before, you didn't but, see it coming. No, you know, it's, it, it's always in the back of your mind. It's always – at the bottom of your heart because with this whole summer and how yeah. it's playing out we and next? all that kind of, are yeah. we next kind of thing? And, and, and no, we didn't. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, how, un, it's unfortunate and there's been a lot of emotion and just the, the silver lining to the whole thing, which is what we kind of seem to be finding these days, day to day with, with COVID. Yeah. And, um, how long would you have kept, kept with it there? I, I was, I'm opening my own place this summer. Yeah. Um, so we, Josh and I had had, kind of had, had a conversation towards the end of last year um, about just kind of moving out over the summer, uh, finding a replacement and doing, doing the whole chef transition yes, thing. Um, not easy. But, you know, it was, a, it was an incredible four years and, and just the, the amount of respect I have for the Wolcons and the Secret Sauce family and just everybody from the top down, is just, it, it will totally guide my career. You know, I've, you get put into places and you, and you learn technique and you go through the whole rigors of the New York and, and Las Vegas and Hong Kong and these major cities and these dining scenes and you learn your own styles and all this kind of stuff and um, you know, the, the secret sauce is, is, is re referred to as a bunch of different things, mm -hmm. uh, namely the positive energy that comes from the company, but you know, it's, it's refinement and it's, it's, it's leadership and it's friendship and, um, you know, it's just total open book policy and it's, it's such a good group. It's such a good do you restaurant mind group if, to be in. If we do something here, chef, you, yeah. you, you wrote a piece that I just, it, it moved me and it was along with that video, um, I, I have it printed out here. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know if you'd do us the sure. honor to just. It, it was just so well constructed, and I really and and, and if this would be too emotional for you, you know, I don't know, but I nah, will see. I'd like to. Um, I'd like to. I'd like for folks to hear this. Uh, the run has come to an end, but the legend will never die. It's so hard to figure out where to start with Vesta. I remember idolizing it when I was in culinary school 16 years ago, before the travels, maturation, and professional journeys that I've taken through my life. The edginess of Vesta Dipping Grill rocked the Denver dining scene and was the bar to which contemporary food was being set in the mile high. I had my culinary school graduation brunch at Steuben's and then took off to New York to start my career. After over a decade later, it all came full circle, and in coming home to Denver, I had the pleasure of joining Secret Sauce team and leading the kitchen in Vesta for the past four years. Things had changed a bit. The evolution had begun. The modernization of the menu in an effort to keep up with cul current culinary trends was the goal, and that goal we accomplished. Not without a slight level of pushback from employees, and guests alike, but we stayed true to the vision and were held in high regard with our friends and family through it all. We grew up, but didn't grow out. Stayed true to the values that had defined Vesta and the Wolcons throughout the years and what had kept Vesta such an ingrained part of the community that surrounded it. An open mind and open ears to our guests and their needs. A sense of community with organizations and development of our surroundings and guests uh, and our guest experiences. And through quite a learning curve of my own, a continuation of what is commonly referred to as the Vesta vibe. The ideals that we continued through the restaurant, as with most leadership, comes from the top down. The people that led the journey, Josh and Jen, are two of the most outstanding people in their field. Emily Biederman is the rock that holds it all together. Old vets that kept the stories and traditions alive and well. My front of house managers that kept the mood light, the wine flowing, and the music bumping. My chef team over the years, Stephen Cox, Brian Hardy, Connor Gushin, Logan Cody, Daniel Lee, Nadine Donovan, and arguably the best team of cooks I've ever had the pleasure of working with, all came together to make Vesta home for me. The best home, one I will never forget. You don't get an outcome like that without resolve, empathy, and a sincere, sincere commitment to being the best we can be together. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Well written, man. Whew, and you worked with some good ones, right? Um, Shit, man. I didn't work with a lot of good ones, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, before me, you know, the, the, the legacies of Matt Selby uh, starting the whole thing and just putting his stamp on the whole Denver dining scene and doing something that nobody, nobody had done. I mean, from here to fucking new york city man i mean it was it was the united states and it was just it was it was it um you know again i, I mentioned josh and jen but um you know my my predecessor brandon foster who unfortunately recently passed away uh was just the the definition of the vesta vibe and that's just and that's that's something that we keep in 
internal. You know, it, it's, it's what you felt when you went with your, on your first date, and mm-hmm. it's what people feel when they go in there, and, and it's, it's hard to explain for, for people that don't work there, um, and it's something that I think that we need to kind of keep going and keep that fire lit. Um, you know, it, it extends through Josh's other restaurants, and, and you know, Steuben's and Ace right now, you didn't see Vesta coming. Uh, Steuben's and Ace are, are, are doing it right now, and you know, Steuben's extended a patio out on 17th and Penn and Ace is doing live music on the weekends and you know obviously very very responsible and I've eaten dinners uh since this whole COVID thing is has lightly lifted and um you know it's just it's it doesn't matter whether it's yeah I've, I've had a very good dinner at Frasca but I, it doesn't matter whether it's you know high-end Frasca or whether it's Steuben's and, and right now I think people are are concerned about how they go out to dinner and what who, who's touching their plates and what's going on and it's just it's, it's a very conscious tangible feeling these days and I you know they they just do it well just like everything else it's steps of service and it's it's congeniality and it's it's making sure that everybody feels so comfortable and so welcomed into the home uh, and I think that that's what separates the secret sauce team of restaurants apart from mm-hmm. anybody else I mean it's it, we're we are literally welcoming you into our home uh, and that's that's what we kind of stood on so that's the vibe right that's okay the vibe. so you know, in in part of I, I would have to imagine the thought process of do we do we continue on or do we close the doors is can we with the model of setting up being a dipping grill and a communal kind of vibe of people just being together and sharing, I don't know as though right now right now is conducive to No, that. you know, I talked to Josh before but I came here just to make sure that yeah. I was okay in saying good? a bunch of things and we good and what we should touch on. And, and, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing, obviously just the transparency is everything for him and, and for, for every good restaurant group out there, you know, this is what we do and these are our practices. And, and, you know, in, in regards to the closing, it's just, you know, unfortunately the model right now with Vesta in particular, there's no patio. Um, and the Vesta vibe, we, you go, you go back to that whole saying, right? I mean, what, what's, what's a restaurant with 50 people in it as opposed to a restaurant with 150 people mm-hmm. in it? And it, it, it's the buzz and it's the feeling and it's the energy and it's, it's this whole thing right now. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we just, I, I, we didn't do anything. I mean, I think his decision mainly spawned around the fact that we couldn't provide the service that we, that we could do. And, and we don't know when this is going to end. And, you think and, that vibe's going to, con- it'll continue on in you. I know that. Absolutely. And, and it'll <laughs> continue on with Steubens. And, you know, just put your efforts where they, where they need to be. And that's the, I mean, that's the biggest thing right now. And, it's a and community, though. It is I think what you, what you touched on as tricky is, is because of Vesta, it's about, it, like in the name. Mm-hmm. It's a dipping so it's a it's a shared you know it's not you guys didn't do shared everything was a shared plate but the mm. sauces were always shared sure and so and that's a little harder I think um, I got to tell you everyone that I know that has been through that place they took the friendships that they made inside of Vesta and carried them forever that mm-hmm. was it's, you know one of memorable. the things yeah where everyone goes and, and you know and one of the th- shout outs I'd give to Josh is is I think it's sad because I don't think a lot of people think of the restaurateur in this situation, mm-hmm. I bet it was killing Josh to to know this is a baby for him that he's had for 23 years, and to know that like all of a sudden, I I you know so a lot. I don't think we look at what how does what effects does it have on the owner? It's and it's and you know for Josh. some for for somebody who yes has has done so much to rally around his people and make sure that their mental health their well being was on the track that. You got to wonder sometimes, like, who's giving it back to him? And so I can. Yeah, that's where I was going. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, completely appreciate that. For for Vess, here's a a little thing and talk about impressions. And and this just actually kind of one of these remember things. Vesta's bar, my home bar, Mm -hmm. I, I made my granite bar in my kitchen, modeled it after Vesta's, because that flowing shape of that bar i brought it to my home because i wanted a little piece of that vibe at my home everybody has a vesta story yes everybody has a vesta story it's crazy I, I, do you guys remember when they did live music yeah. uh do you i was i wasn't there i was, yeah, you I were was like, overseas, Nick's I, was like I wasn't born give, you guys give, <laughs> give us give us a story that just it's it sticks with you it was just like man i'll remember the and it could be it could be front of the house could be back of the house it could be whatever but it's like man this is a pretty interesting story oh my god i don't I, every new year's <laughs> eve I, you know just the one thing that sticks with me the most in yeah. there is the history of the people that worked there were so ingrained like you said mm-hmm. and it was such a 
it was such a feeling and the, the Brandon Fosters of the world, a former chef, you know, ushered me in and, and, and helped me out through the whole transitional process and what to expect with our guests and, and just, you know, open, open minds and open, open arms for everything. Um, but even before Plates for the Peak or Restaurant Week or any of our charities that we would do, you would see so many old school people. And I don't think it's necessarily one memory, although I have hundreds. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one thing that will stick in my mind is, is, is that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think anybody left without having new friends and without having a piece of their family. And See, see now, Jay would want to hear you. Jay's a 30-year guy who's been beaten down by this business, and he bartended. He wants to hear you talk about dragging somebody out of there by their hair. Or what do you want? What do you just want to hear him just say? Just a good choke. Is that, is that really a the good time choke for this out. thing? Is it? Is it time for me? Is yeah, it time, listen. Is it time for me to tell the story that Josh <laughs> Wolcon and I had to pull somebody out of a locked bathroom stall on on St. Patrick's Day? Yes, it's time. Is that it? Put them outside, yes, right? Yes, okay. it's time. I remember That's this. Well, I'll just I'll, I'll give you a ten second one just to make you feel like so you don't have to tell yours. You know, man, I came up behind this one dude one time. He had no idea I was there, and I choked the life almost out of him because he was trying to fight like all of our managers, and I just came out and had no idea it was happening. But I saw, you know, I'm a super genius, obviously, right? So I put together a situation in like two seconds. I'm like, choke him. Right. Choke. And I just right behind, he had no idea who I was, where I came. I choke him and drug him outside. It was the greatest now, night of my Vesta, life. Now, Vesta, not really like a Gibby's Big Backyard, no. right? Not, no. I mean, the, you're not going to have to choke too many no. people. No. But I'm sure you heard a time or two like, chef, you wouldn't believe what's <laughs> happening up there, or, you know. Oh, my gosh. But, from From... <laughs> From uh, from homeless Shelly that comes in to get to get cokes mm -hmm. and waters yes. on Saturday nights, and I, 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 Carrie Cummings bartender there for 17 years. If you've been invested, you know Carrie. I mean, she I, the stories that she can tell is it just gut wrenching laughter. It is hilarious. Yeah. But. You ever had anybody change a baby on their table? You know, <laughs> not, with, with food. Not Vesta was a, a dating <laughs> place, Jay. No. Man, because yeah. guess what? I'll that's nine this, months later at Gibby. That's I'll tell you this saying, much, right? man. After, those after dinner, they got pregnant. No, <laughs> they didn't have babies. Right? Those people exist, man, right at the table. All right, so like oh. everything, I mean, all chapters come to an end and, and books close up and, and some just continue with a sequel or – um, but life goes on, and what's next for you, man? I mean, a young guy here and full of life, tan, tall, handsome. <laughs> you got a career ahead of you. You're starting up your own spot. I am starting up my own spot. Uh, I'm partnering with the Avanti boys, and we're open in Boulder, uh, right on 14th and Pearl, which is exciting. Um, rooted Craft Kitchen. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a very firm believer and, and a proponent of slow yeah. food and good What's food your ethos? Yeah. And uh, we, we believe slow food can be done fast. And, you know, I think it's a common misconception with people that, that slow food just takes long. I love know. that thought process. Um, and I really do. It's, it, it's like we went to a farm in Durango, Colorado called Ancient Future. Yeah. Freaking blew my mind. Right? Okay. I mean, uh, it, here's, the, here's the past, yeah. ancient, but with the future techniques of what you're doing, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Good food yeah. can come. Good. I love where and, you and, go with that. And I think, yeah. like, Chuck shows you that. Yeah. Yeah, what Adam's doing over at Chuck's. Yeah, I, I think well, so. But, and Greg said this, or Jay was saying this the other day. Keep it simple, man. You don't got to make it. Doing. Don't make it so complex that you've got to have all these things come together right at the right time because that's not. No. That's when the experience isn't good. What, what are you going to serve? Uh, well, it, it started off as a, a vegetarian and vegan uh, approach. Be, is that your lifestyle? No, I just thought that there was a there was a market need for it. I tend to eat very healthily on my own, mm -hmm. but um, you know, to expand the demographic a little bit, we you know we. I, I feel like people's mentality of what redefining American food is, is to make it bigger and more gluttonous and, and more filling and just kind of yeah. bigger, the better, right? Yeah. I mean, we're going to fill you up yeah. and, and do all these greasy approaches. And, yeah. and I think that we can just source them better. And we're not, you know, value is definitely the first and foremost thought of our, of our minds. So we're not trying to skimp on anybody, but being able to source, you know, our chickens from Cook's Venture in Arkansas, which is a fully, you know, four season a year sustainable farm where, you know, the chickens eat off the ground. Cook's and Venture, man, that's that chicken that we got that one it's time. Like oh, it's delicious. You may, I mean, yeah. do you rem I, know I remember being like, that chicken man, that one time. Yeah, because no. the breasts on those chickens were. It's like were, duck. I, I, it's like you're eating duck. I, you know, I'm yeah. not, I'm a, I'll live at 7-Eleven on their food. I'm just a monster <laughs> that way. So for me to talk about <laughs> food, you know, like, oh man, you got, I told everybody I knew about Cook's Venture. I'm like, you got to get this yeah. chicken, man. Um, you know, Waggy Burgers were, and then, you know, that's a craft menu portion of it. And again, there's only four or five different items over there that, that will be on there through the mm -hmm. seasons. Uh, and then our market menu approach is something that actually I did at Vesta for the last couple mm -hmm. years and uh, had a very good response with our guests. And we got everything from locally grown Colorado farms. You know, over the last five or six years, the, 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 
the growth of the Colorado farmers is is exponential. They're, we're yeah. figuring out this climate, and oh, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah, um, man. I, well, I, it's I'm becoming like sexy again. Do it you is. think it's all service? I we could listen. We could go on till six, truly, because yeah. I think service. I'd love to ask you where your take on service and how that screwed up our food and turning us into fast food nation. Because all of a sudden, everyone wants everyone. I want to come in and I want to eat in less than an hour, or you want to kick me out in less than an hour because you need to turn the table. And there's a big in, uh, conversation, I think, around that because I think our serve, I think the food experience has changed so much in this country in particular, where we need to turn tables, and well, we're, we're making money and the rent's so damn high. Where's your answer? Yeah, go well, for it. Let's embrace it then. You know, if that's the mentality, and I think you know, obviously, this last summer has completely polarized what the, the landscape of yeah. restaurants is going to look like mm-hmm. moving forward. Um, if you can't beat them, join them. Right. And, and let's just offer really good food at that, at that quick service kind of I stuff, like I, you know, and we, and we have, you know, three or four ingredients yeah. and we keep it simple yeah. and we don't have a, you know, if, if we get to a point where we want something on the menu, then, then there has to be something that comes off. Yeah. And, and you know what I mean? Totally. There, there's no reason to have stagnant inventory and let things go bad and, and be able to use the things that are around us from the farms that yeah. provide it. And, and that's exciting for us. And, and, it is going to be polarizing, you know, and, and the service standards are, are going to go as high as your five course tasting menus and extreme three hour experiences at restaurants. And a lot of it's going to just go the exact opposite direction. Mm-hmm. It's going to be, you know, I, I, I can't speak to what we're doing yet because sure. we're not open, but you know, obviously I, well, have, I have my vision, but it's going to be the Steubens. It's going to be the ace. It's yeah. going to be people that do good food well, yeah. quickly. Well, it's interesting, you know, um, Kelly Whitaker talking about Boston's kind of new deal. And he's like, man, you're not going to eat any food out of here unless you order it yesterday. Yeah. Right? No, I live right across the street, man. That's yeah. Great. And he's like, and he's like, I kind of like that. You know, I've got this under control. Yeah. You well, know? for a chef, there's a lot to be said. If you can plan your menus better because you know what tomorrow's going to Oh, yeah, and you bring. have zero waste, and it's yeah. all there and sold ahead of time. And Dude. it's good food, and it's, it's ready to go for you. You know, and people, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, dude, I'm not trying to put you to work, but what are you doing tomorrow night? Chef Dana's dinners, that we got a great dinner here. It would be cool if you just came, did a little cameo, you know, kiss yeah. the baby or whatever. We got good food. But she may need a hand. I don't know. She might. Yeah, uh, hell yeah. You know, I, I love Dana. Real, she, she, tra- she taught me in my, one of my first jobs, man. And we opened uh, Rioja together, and we were back in the prep kitchen, and, and that was, that's, my, that's my loca. So we do a summer dinner series, downtown Pizza Republica. We, usually we do it in here with can you believe we have 30 guests in here dining? Usually we get the farmers on the TVs, the <laughs> chefs talk to it. Downtown Pizza Republica was donated to us, so we have the spacious patio right there by the convention awesome. center. We've got a kitchen built outside. Uh, Chef Dana's going to be out there cooking. She's got a couple of people with us, but she was like, uh, oh, you know, what? what's going to happen? I'll, slam, you, I'll come down slam. Would you? Okay. Yeah. I got one more, I, one more thing to mention and, and I, I, an invite for you as well. Yeah. What, what, are you, what are you doing this weekend? What do you got? <laughs> Um, well, as I mentioned before, Chef Foster, uh, yes, Vesta sir. passed yes, away a couple please. weeks ago, um, and Vesta has since closed. Mm-hmm. You know, he pioneered our charcuterie program down in our basement that we've been operating with, with mm-hmm. for eight years now. Um, and we have to move all that product. So we're doing this charity event that all proceeds go back to his family. Uh, we're selling all of our charcuterie out of the basement. It's called Boards for Brandon. Um, there's a live talk, uh, invite list cause we don't want to congest the space, mm-hmm. um, so if you guys can sign up or anybody listening wants to sign yep. up uh, to come by da- down and buy some charcuterie boards. Uh, there's also time slots that we are selling off our wine inventory that's down there for uh, just All Investa. Yeah. All Investa. Okay. Saturday do you mind Sunday, if we, the ninth. we are, we're going to mention, so this is general public as well? Yeah. If they sign up, everybody needs to sign, sign up through our website, know? VestaDenver.com. Through VestaDenver.com. So if yeah. we, we're going to promote this all week long great do if it. you don't mind yeah. you want to hear an interesting tidbit real quick Greg before he says that yep. I was down in that basement when they made a fake wall to hide it from the <laughs> health inspector hey we didn't have we never did that, that we, that, never, did, we that, never did that I <laughs> love you guys these are back in the day of Selby when he would drag my butt down in that basement make me drink a PBR yeah. yep. and a shot of high noon and we would we would these go stories down there. can be told now trust oh. trust me there will be Montuckies now I think <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I love it. I Brian love it. and say I went down and I built the wall no no no, no 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 <laughs> this was some fun There's this so was back history, in man. the day man this was 
community, though. These yeah. were these guys. This was an old wardrobe was from great. like the the fifties or something. It's that, a little better now. It's health department. Uh, it, well, no, no, no. Our, you guys stepped it up. Now, I remember right? when Brandon came in. He was like, "No, we we're going legit." <laughs> but that basement down in the Vesta. I mean, no one. Greg, it's got to be over a hundred years. You go down there, and oh, yeah. I, you feel the ghost stories down there, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. It is for sure. It's going to be been in the basement of Gaetano's? No. That'll scare the hell out of you. Well, I, yeah, well, there's a lot of history, too. I bet. And gangsters I walking bet. through. <laughs> I I'll, be, I'll be down there all next week. Dude, home. we're so. yes, in, in on it. And if tomorrow night you want to come by, we'd love to have you. Sweet. Um, good, good menu, good food. Show you the menu. Uh, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Taking the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, drove down from Boulder. Yeah, get up, new... there, get up there with our opening too. I'll send yeah. you a little invite. Would you there please? Too. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. We got a we got uh, an all star lineup of chefs going up there. Man. That's fantastic. First time really just shooting the breeze with you, man. But yeah. I really enjoy your company. Thanks, man. Yeah. Wow. Appreciate you know it. the boards for Brandon are sold out. Yep. I just went to the website and it's telling me I got to join a wait list and I'm doing it. The cu- I think the custom boards are sold out, but we're doing some eco stuff. We had some custom ones made up for like these VIP sales, but That's fantastic. I, might, I wow. may be wrong, but I think there's some extra ones that'll be. No, this is. Soon. I love to see that everything's got sold out, except except one or two. I'm jumping on it Sunday between yeah. one thirty and two. Let me confirm is with that the time and I'll, uh, slot. I'll yeah. let you know. And if we, if we could options. all live our lives so that we leave an impression on this world, like Brandon Foster. Oh my gosh, who this world would be a much much better place. Absolutely, be like Brandon. Yeah, yeah, he was just such a sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, he was. I'll tell you the guy and and where he went with um, it, it's not Meals on Wheels, it's uh, Project Angel. Project Angel. Heard. That was Brandon. Yeah, I'll absolutely. tell you because that you was leave, who his leave, heart was. You leave a post like Vesta with the ego behind mm-hmm. it and the stature around the city and all that kind of stuff. There's a very few select people that would actually go do something like that. That that is completely servant to the community and just whole heart filling like that. And it's one in a million, man. Yeah, one in a million. And he filled some big shoes and did it well. I'll yeah. tell you, because John Paul, who was over there, he totally filled those shoes. Absolutely. Like it was nobody's business, yeah. Okay, man, that's it for today. What a show. Fantastic show. And looking forward to seeing everybody tomorrow night. We got work to do. I got menus menus to print, uh, welcome cards. You know, with the uh, outbreak, we've got to be particularly careful. We're only doing two tops and four tops, right? Um, so people can't do singles or say, and so we get a lot of people to buy tickets for two and they're like, Oh, can we upgrade to four? So I'm shuffling these tables around, making sure we can accommodate everybody. It's a palatial patio. Um, just well appointed, very spacious, the best of the best are cooking tomorrow night's going to be a good one. And word on the street. This gentleman's going to come say hello. I think hello. I will make a cameo down there. I'll be I, down there. I think you should, Love too. It. All right. Uh, we'll break off. We've got to thank everybody who's on today's show. Oh, Jay Johnson. Man, Jay Johnson, Bear Creek Distillery. He's, he's one of the best all-timers. Chef Dana Rodriguez, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Mike Harper from Harper Feeders, for coming on the show today. We'll have him uh, over the uh, system tomorrow. And people don't know there. what they're getting, yeah, Greg. Those did you see those little like lamb T bones? I didn't. Came, I didn't know oh, what, what they came through. Gosh, he came sir. through with some lamb T bones. Oh, so. and I've had one of them, and they are just will blow you. These are thicker. Not yeah. to be mistaken with Nick Kaiser. <laughs> Nick Kaiser is here. Nick Kaiser. Man, if there's a name that can be screwed up, I will screw it up. Yeah, everyone, I, everyone does. Truly. No, it's okay. And if there's not a name that can't be screwed <laughs> up, screw it I'll up. screw that up. Because <laughs> I, the easy ones I can do. Like, yeah. no, I'll call you some other complete name, and that's the name that's I right. gave you. <laughs> You're Jeremy, as it stands. <laughs> Jay Parker, as always, thank you very much. Brian Freeman, alongside of these gents, I'm Greg Hollenbach. For Chef Nick Kaiser, we're going to see you down the road. The Modern Eater Show continues.